land on the other side. Oh, oh yeah, let's just put a, back let's a, put a playable raid boss in the game. Good job, abilities. Blizzard. Yes, Sounds please. about right. <laughs> People say Blizzard doesn't listen to the players. The problem isn't that Blizzard doesn't listen to the players. Sometimes Blizzard listens to the players too much. Guys, hello. What is up, guys? Hello, 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 everybody. Oh, today is the day. I literally just woke up. Wrath of the Lich King is coming out. I think it is going to be, um, I mean, it's been leaked for a while now, the potential of like the dragon flight thing. Uh, that, that I'm pretty sure is true. Wrath Classic. Peggy 12. Let's go. Will of Wow! For the Alliance! For the wow, the graphics were really good on that one. <laughs> the next chapter, a more adventure. Starts now for Azeroth! All right, let's see it, chat. Hi, everyone. I'm John Height, General Manager for Warcraft. And with me today are my friends... I like him very Ian much, Hazard by Hustles, the way. ...who is the game director for person. World of Warcraft. And Holly Longdale, who leads up the production team for WoW Classic. I haven't met I really her. appreciate you tuning in. I know we're really excited to be able to give you updates on what's happening in World of Warcraft. But first, I want to thank our community for all the feedback you've given us this year, and especially our community council. You've helped shape and influence the updates that we've done recently and what you're going to see in the upcoming year. For our next adventure in World of Warcraft, we're going to go back to Azeroth. We're going to a space with high fantasy. I mean, our fans have asked for this for a long time. This has been kind of the foundation of much of the lore of WoW. So without further ado, Let's watch the cinematic. Here we go. Shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Ten thousand years ago. The world has been sundered. It cries out in pain. We must go to its aid. We entrust our ancestral home to you, the Watchers. <laughs> We're going to increase. Let the land slumber, hidden, even from our own eyes. You will feel our return in the waking of the land. Then you must light the beacon of tear hold, <laughs> lest the path home be lost to us forever. I do. Even though I don't actively play retail, I do love this. All of a sudden you hear da, 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 the Green Ranger and the Green Megazord comes out. Power Ranger expansion. Wait, what made him wake up? Rocks. 
be Alex Straza shows up. He's gonna show up. You have to be able to do that. He's a fake rock person. Of course he's strong. I... Sorry. <laughs> you have to be a strong dude. Once again, here, the new age of dragons shall begin. Dragonfly, yeah. There you go. Um, I think it was, uh, that was a, that was a decent teaser. Leaks were real, yeah. Dragons! Dragons. This is so cool. <laughs> dragons! No one saw it coming. <laughs> no one saw it coming. Carefully kept secret. I thought it was, I thought it was decent. Seriously, I mean, what did we just see there? The awakening of the Dragon Isles, the return yeah. of dragons, the dawn of a new age. Right, we've seen Rathian searching for his father's legacy, searching for the Dragon Isles. There's a reason why he hasn't been able to find them until now. You the know what's crazy, chat? The Dragon Isles were in the game files for like the, the original WoW Alpha in the Dragon Isles like from the world, but also beckoning the dragons They had, they had files named the Dragon the Isles. I assume pretty good variety of locales. So that's why this is something a lot of people Isles. are hyped for. Yes. Is because the Dragon like, Isles, as kind of standard for WoW expansion, consist of five zones, four standard leveling zones, and a new starter zone that we'll get to in a second. Can you talk a little bit about how the team part. found ways to thread the dragon aspects throughout the environments? The, the Dragon Isles are a place that is lush and primal, bursting with elemental energy. As Azeroth herself reawakens, oh those real, primal right. forces are expressed throughout the environment, whether it's magma activity, volcanic activity, whether it's the icy wastes of the Azure <laughs> Span. And each one of those has a connection to a dragon flight that we've seen before. And it's gonna be an amazing place for players to arrive at and explore. All right, you know I'm gonna ask. <laughs> yes, okay, so. Can, can, can I be a dragon? Let, yeah, let, let, let's start getting into some features here and what Dragonflight means for you as well as just a place. Um, so first off, yes, we have an all new playable race. Getting in a lore read through the race. Yeah. Uh, this is a Draken, a Draconic race, but dragons in, in Warcraft have oh, the ability wow. to take real. on a human So the form. leaks were real. What that is can funny. They new race. Have unique abilities as literally a dragon, that doesn't quite fit any of our existing classes. And so what we're doing is this is not just a new race, but it's also a new class. So this is you real. Know, a new race to World of Warcraft and not just an allied race is something that we don't do lightly, but telling this expansion, this story so focused around dragons felt like the perfect time for it. So if you are a Drakthir, you will be the Evoker class. Drakthir can only be Evokers, Evokers can only be Drakthir. And the reason why only a Drakthir could be an Evoker oh, wait. is that an Evoker is really combining 
the ability to call upon the magic of a the new class and new race with the unique physical gifts that a Drakthir has, the ability to actually take flight and do an Anixia style strafing deep breath over the battlefield, land on the other side. Oh, oh yeah, let's just put a, back let's a, put a playable raid boss in the game. Good job, abilities. Blizzard. Yes, Sounds please. about right. <laughs> like, the Evoker has two specializations. Dude, this thing's going to be overpowered as hell. Dude. Either range DPS or healer. And they wear male armor. We figured, you know, with the new There's hero classes, DPS, classes we've added over melee, the years, we have tank enough hybrid. melee, we don't need more of those. And Wearing male also, armor and dual wielding shields. The raid leaders are going to love you for that. <laughs> exactly. This is definitely a hero class. And so that means that, you know, like the Death Knights before them or Demon Hunters, they will be starting level 58. And then they're going to have a new starter zone. So they're going to have a slightly different journey into the Dragon Isles as opposed to the rest of us that are sailing there from other parts of Azeroth. Can you talk to be a honest, I think it is about the cool, customization? It's like what so is going to be able to identify my drag hair character? Basically anything and everything. You know, skin color, hair color, jewelry, tattoos, other adornments. You can make this character the expression. Oh yeah, they did of say it's just all 58. In Azeroth. New zone, new class, yep. new race. Well, tell us about some of the, the system updates yeah, or so, features. Of course, a new expansion <laughs> ah, brings with it you know, new systems, new features. I think in recent expansions, one of the things we've tended to do is really have these deep features that were closely tied to a specific expansion that would then get left behind as we moved on. Mm -hmm. And we've heard loud and clear from players that, you know, it's kind of a bummer to start off every new expansion by leaving a large part of your character behind, by leaving a large part of your progression behind. So this time around, Why what we're doing is really pouring all of our energy players? into permanent well, revamps, overhauls, and improvements to World of Warcraft's core systems. Things like our progression systems, in this case, our talent system, is something that we want to completely revamp. We want to take a look at our UI. Well, I, I'll complain we want to take a look at professions. Anyway. Like, so with the talent revamp legitimate. and the arrival of Classic, did you learn anything about how our talents work? I think seeing a new generation of players play with those talents and work through those talent trees really underscored some of the things that, frankly, we lost mm -hmm. when we shifted to the Mists of Pandaria-style talents and beyond. A big piece of that was some of just the granularity, the feeling of getting a level and spending a point to customize your character to make yourself a bit better in some specific way. But also, you know, the, that sense of hybridity that you could have, that's something that we've largely lost. And so the new talent system avoids directly pitting player power throughput choices directly against those sort of utility hybrid choices because we know that there's always a right outcome there. And we also uh -huh. understand that, you know, there's a lot of strength They're in the flexibility back talent of the trees? talent system to let players customize their talents for a particular encounter or for dungeons versus PvP, and we don't want to lose any of that. So, John, you But, are... dude, are they going to oh do it God. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got this 30-inch monitor trying to keep track of where I am on the map, all my buffs, and, oh, over here, what's going on in chat. It has literally made my eyes go like this. <laughs> so, yep. you're, and you're not alone in that. We've made a lot of incremental changes and additions over the years, but really this is a revamp, this is an overhaul. And so we're excited to really modernize the look and feel while staying true to the origins of World of Warcraft. Now at the same time, we're not looking to take away the, so sort of the power user customization yeah, there. Add-ons are still there that, if you so. want them, but we want a much better default out-of-the-box experience for all players, new and old. I didn't really care can I ago. reduce elements, remove elements? If I want to explore the world and, and see the beauty of Azeroth. When it comes to specific elements, as much as possible, we want to let players choose what to show and what to hide so that they can control it themselves. You mentioned professions. I have a critical question about this. Go on. Can I wear a chef's hat? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Our approach to professions in Dragonflight is really all about delivering on fantasy and identity as a crafter. And so if you want to be a serious blacksmith, if you want to be a great leather worker, we want to deliver the ability to invest time and energy into that, become a master crafter, be able to make items that are in demand, interact with the community. Oh, really? One of the okay. That we want to do to support that is a new work order system to have a bit more convenience than just spamming trade chat all day. But if you are someone, you're not yourself a blacksmith. Okay, you that's have a actually bunch of good. Mats, and you want them forged into a great sword, you can put that work order up, list your mats, offer a commission, and that's a actually a good system. Come along and make you the weapon of your dreams. I think we left out one thing though. You can be a drag there, go to Dragon Isles. Can I have a dragon? Uh. What's the fantasy of dragons if not soaring over the lands? Did and so we're really excited yeah. to introduce a feature that we're calling dragon years. riding. It's dynamic, 
with you know everything from momentum to dive bombs, the ability to you know just sort of build that speed up and feel the world rushing past you in a way that should be much more exciting than traditional flight that we've had available in the past, but that's also available for players through a customizable dragon mount right from the start. So this is a skill you learn over time, right, to become an awesome dragon rider? Yes, you'll be able to sort of upgrade oh God, aspects of your dragon. flight, but you will have this new form of flight from the start. And the dragon companion that you have is, of course, very thoroughly customizable, which is a new, <laughs> a new thing for us for mounts. This is not just a generic dragon that everyone has, but a drake that is yours. You know, what, what do you want its scales to look like, horns, the shape of its head, other attachments, armor pieces, and more. Take your pick. This is so cool. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so the Dragonflight expansion is going to see players leveling to 70, going to the all new continent of the Dragon Isles, which consists of five zones, four standard leveling zones, and a new starter zone for our Drakthir class, Chocobo? as well as a yeah. range of systems revamps, such as a Dude, new all these games system, do this. They just an overhaul and update to our UI, and an entirely fresh look at professions with more depth than ever before. Right, made a whole Also getting around it, the right? Dragon Isles is gonna come in the form of dragon riding, which lets you customize and upgrade your own mount so that you can fly in a sense from the start. And of course, as with any new expansion, we have a new set of dungeons, a raid, and much more to come. We also have an alpha that will be starting up in, in, in the future. Check out our website for more information and keep an eye out for those opt-in signups if you want to help us test out Dragonflight and give us even more feedback to make it better. We do have a deep dive that follows this, so please stay around. Classic players, we haven't forgotten about you. You could probably guess where we're gonna go next. <laughs> One of the all-time favorite expansions for World of Warcraft. Let's watch the cinematic. There we go, here it is. of Lordaeron whispered the name Arthas. When my days have come to an end, you shall be king. Later this year. Are they gonna give us the date? Still no date. I think it's gonna. I still think it's gonna be November. It's just incredible, isn't it? It's, Every I, time uh, by the I end of the year. The cinematic. I get. That's chills. what I heard. But no I thought they were gonna give us the date. I still make my way all the way up to Storm Peaks to try and find the time lost Proto Drake, and have yet to get it. I've got to say, Dragon <laughs> Blight. The, the wide open nature of the zone, Bormorous <laughs> Temple in the center of it. It's an unforgettable expansion for both the so developer funny. and a player. How we envision classic Dungeon Finder is not a good fit for our community. That was kind of the first step that may have eroded some of that social fabric. Now, as, as people have gone through the experience of going back to vanilla, mm -hmm. rebuilding those groups, relying on each other. No shit. I didn't know. They were doing this. participant just to show up and then leave. Yep. Yeah, that makes total sense. But today, you can do that in Shadowlands. You'll be able to do that in Dragonflight. <laughs> it's a self selected guys, group guys, of people who specifically guys. want that different experience. Yes. Let's make sure that's what we continue to get. <laughs> that leads right into <laughs> arena teams in Burning Crusade oh, Classic. That's amazing. So I talked to them about how I thought it was bad. That was a long time ago. Because individual rating is preferable and a better experience for them than arena teams. Also, with Wrath of the Lich King, Barbershop which allows you to customize your character. We're going to be adding a few more options that were I think not they're add faction existing transfers. when Wrath launched. But also there's another side of this where we are not gonna charge a real money fee. It was a paid character customization fee, right? Yeah. 
it seems the right thing to do that that just be available in game for gold and we add more options to it, right? It's sort of like spell batching in a sense. There's a lot of technical advancements and it's not about the philosophy of what makes classic classic and what brings people together. It's just what's the better experience and let's not artificially restrict something that we can provide a better version of just for the sake of nostalgia. They need to add PVE to PVP server transfers. So, Wrath, the level cap's being increased to level 80, so we'll be introducing a level 70 boost so that players who want to get in with their friends or just explore Northrend right away will be able to do that. You can apply it to a Death Knight, but you will be able to use it otherwise. And of course, we have Inscription, a whole new profession, so we're really excited about that. Yeah, and as we continue this road to Wrath, we're going to be looking to getting a lot more feedback on beta, and we'll make changes as we need to. People get mad about Such boosting chat, but it was time to be playing World the, of the Warcraft. boost was unjustifiably the return good of the Wrath for, of the Lich King for good, classic sorry. fans, and taking for, us for, somewhere new with Dragonflight. Said, we're so excited to be able to bring uh, these adventures to you. Don't the, forget, the there's a good. deep dive on Dragonflight where you're going to get a lot more information. Thank you so much for spending this time with us, and we'll see you in Azeroth. And we'll see you in Northrend. And in the Dragon Isles. It it is, it is. So let's talk about the setting for Dragonflight, the Dragon Isles. Dragon Isles have been known for a long time in Warcraft history as a mysterious place where- To be honest, I kinda just wanted to watch that part and leave, but we're going to this Um, place that is kind of the broodlands of all I the actually find this really the place so where they nested, where they built their civilization. The Dragon Isles was the center of the dragon's kingdom when the world was young and the mortal races were just starting to form kingdoms of their own. But when the Legion invaded for that War of the Ancients, that sundering that resulted from the, the explosion of the Well of Eternity, literal the world. Literal sundering of the yeah. continents of Azeroth. And because of the breaking of the world, that magic kind of drained away and the land went dormant. So they had to leave the Dragon Isles behind. Mm-hmm. And as we saw in the pre-render, they left behind some Titan Watchers to look over the land and win Someday, they hoped that elemental energy would resurge once again and draw the dragons home, reestablish their kingdom. And that's when the message goes out to the flights and they feel it in their bones. Now it's the time for the sky to light up with the colors of the aspects once again and for Alex Straza and the others to come home. But the land has changed a lot in all these thousands of years they've been away and some very old threats have awakened as well. We're looking into the culture of dragons as they exist in Warcraft. Dragons as we know them today were very different in the early past, the early history of Azeroth. They were much more primitive, much more savage, what we now know as proto-dragons. And then some of the dragons were empowered to become the aspects. The green flight, red flight, blue flight, bronze flight, black flight, each with unique powers, each with the ability to protect the world in different ways. These pillars of draconic power appointed to defend Azeroth from threats within and without. The dragons used that power both for good in the case of most of the aspects, but also for nefarious reasons in the case of the black dragon flight led by Neltharion who would become Deathwing. And what we will find in Dragonflight is that some of these ancient divisions run deep. And so it begs the question, where do we go from here? If this is an opportunity to reclaim their legacy, to be the protectors as the cinematic mentioned that they once were, To do that, they're going to need the help of our heroes, our players, to come to the Dragon Isles with them and face some of these reawakening challenges because it's not just that this land is peacefully waiting for the dragons to return and reclaim it. There's those old enemies that have awakened as well. Yeah. One of those being a race of kind of elemental half giants, the Jaradin. The Dragon Isles isn't just populated by dragons or Mm. just by the Jaradin. There's also many other occupants here in the Dragon Isles that have been here either just recently or for a while, including a fan favorite coming back, the Tuskar. That's going to be awesome. We've got other (laughs) cultures there as well in the Dragon Isles. We're going to find out about a civilization of centaurs that predates the ones that arose on Kalimdor Mm -hmm. much later. And some of our favorite characters that we've seen over the last few expansions, such as Rathian. And whether he's ready to step up into a leadership role, or uh, if there are other alternatives out there that would be better suited to the job of being the Thanks for slime, thank you for the 41 months. 
I think one thing Thank you, thing Dexter Slime. I just saw that. Players are going to be really dream, excited about this expansion. Months. is Jack, the new one playable year. race, the Drac Fear. Penance Nicole, That's 15 right. months. And this Bunger, is thank something you for the two that months. Nelfarian, before he was Deathwing, before he went full crazy world dragon, that he put into motion? Nelfarian saw those primalists that were kind of breaking away from the aspects and what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, in those first experiments, he took the essence of dragons, their strength, their nobility, their wisdom, and he combined it with that scrappiness, that that adaptability that the mortal races had, and he wanted Mr. to use Mustache, that to create a hundred the ideal subs. soldier in his mind. Thank the you so much. Exploration dude. is really one of the key themes of this expansion. You're, we're going to be going to this ancient place that the dragons Thank left you for behind long ago. Subs, so man. we've That's made these ton, huge zones with all kinds of places to delve into and find the little five treasures years. Thank and you little so much, secrets dude. tucked away. Yeah, chat, this is uh, my today, to technically today is my five year streaming and there's anniversary. So much architectural me. history and how clearly aspirational was the kingdom of the dragons and how it lost so much. And the themes of trying to return to that, to try to find your legacy, to try to figure out who you were before everything went awry. But there's questions, you know, thematic questions of what does it mean to be true to your legacy? Are we going to repeat the mistakes of the past? The dragons have had <laughs> yes. to learn those lessons, just like the mortal <laughs> kingdoms yes. have had to. And I think that's one of the that's reasons why so much, the dragons man. see this now as the time that they have to return. And they have we'll to step up once here. again as protectors of Azeroth. We're helping the dragons because the dragons have helped us in the past too. So by using the Explorers League and the Reliquary together, that allows us to delve into some of that history. And when I look, you know, upon the Dragon Isles and all of its visual splendor, I get so excited for the prospect of a truly Azerothian adventure alongside Calicos, along with Rathi and Ebonhorn, um, with Isera's daughter Marithra, as each one of them is trying to find their own flight. I am taken uh. by the exploration and the potential for adventure and just new horizons within this world. There's going to be old stories from that time past, that history that only the dragons knew for the longest time. We're going to be able to explore that. It really feels like just a breath of fresh air. So now we're going to turn things over to some of our colleagues who will take you on that deep dive into the locations and the features of Dragonflight. OK, here we go. Hello, I'm Stephanie. I'm Josh. I'm Jackie. And I'm Gary. I'm and we're part of, of the Luke teams Roberts. that are building the first two zones, the Encounter and the Dragon Isles, Ooh, the Waking Shore okay. and the Anaran Plains. The very first zone in Dragonflight you're going to come to is the Waking Shores. It's wild, untamed land. It's waking up around you, too, and the elements are just going <laughs> crazy. The art team again has hit it out of the park. You'll see like a lava mountain flowing in through the beach, giant proto dragons swooping down, gobbling up members of your expedition. We have such rife opportunities to show elementals rising up because of the crazy magic that's flying around. Uh, the one well, thing I love is just how you get to the Dragon Isles, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to get on your boat in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, and the first thing you do is oh, sail Phantom, between like the dragon ruin architectures. Garage the boats come Thank right you. alongside each other. You can jump from one boat to the other and just start causing havoc on the other faction's boat. For those who love PvP, this is a great opportunity for war mode. Sure. It's free for all out there. It's going to be great. <laughs> But it's okay. There's an innkeeper on the beach. So that if you're in that situation and you don't want to be in war mode anymore, you can just hop out right there. The Reliquary and the Explorers <laughs> League are working together. The Horden Alliance are sending an expedition together. It's not the military. It's not the soldiers. This is the scientists, the settlers exploring this new land. So it's a lot more optimistic tone. One of my favorite things about the Waking Shores is the Red Dragon Flight, led by Queen Alexstrasza, the Life Binder. They have the mandate of nurturing and protecting all life, which means Horden Alliance, Gorlocks, trolls, everybody. So they take that duty seriously. When the Horde and the Lions come to the Waking Shores, they want to be there to help guide the people through the new land and welcome them. But they're uh, not the only one in the Waking Shores. We have the ancestral home of the Black Dragon Flight there too, which has fallen on tough times since Deathwing's descent. And so Rathian's coming over to the Isles with us, and he's going to try and come to terms with the state of the Dragon Flight, which is a few loyal Draconids and Dragon Spawn trying to hold their ground. What can the future of the Dragonflight be if it's just Rathian? 
because it's not just the dragons that are coming back to the Dragon Isles, but also their longtime rival, the Jardin. I love the Jardin so much. They're half giants that wield the power of magma. And when the Waking Shores and the Dragon Isles went to slumber, they also slumbered. They're back now, and they are ready to raise chaos. Yeah, they're massive. They're riding giant lava mammoths parading around, just stomping on your face. And they were the enemies of the Dragonfly for so long. They fought against the Red Dragonfly, hunted dragons down, and they're really taking this opportunity to rise up. As the Red Dragonfly have the mandate of nurturing life, they don't want to just stomp out the Jardin completely, but they want to make sure that they don't have the power to affect those around them negatively, to make sure they don't go on a rampage and destroy the ecosystem that has been created here. And so those are awesome things in the Waking Shore, but Seth, there really is only one right answer for the best thing in Waking Shores, right? What? This is true. Ducks. We finally have those webbed feet hooligans in our game. We cracked the technology. <laughs> I it was be cool. Fly. Like, look. You should be proud. Ducks. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. The Onaran planes ah. come right after the Waking Shores. Mm -hmm. It's so breathtaking at first glance. The Onaran planes are big, wide open planes. And the player is going to be constricted a little bit. And then you see this big contrast of a zone. We don't always get that opportunity, that cinematic moment where the player can have a framed view when they see this area. Come out and you got that postcard Maya shot. Sends of the planes. And then you see this giant fire proto dragon breathing fire and a herd of centaur like harpoon down the yeah. proto dragon, crash into the ground. And the first thing you get to do is go help them kill the proto dragon. Like how cool is that? Who is Onara? <laughs> Onara is the wild god of the wind. And she's appeared before as like this big spirit eagle. She's the one who guided the centaur to the Dragon Isles many, many years ago. She blessed them, took their caravan across, and then showed them the plains. How fun at the beginning of this expansion was exploring the culture of the centaur. The centaur are these mighty, awesome hunters that back when they first came to the Dragon Isles, they fought the green dragons all day long. Eventually they realized that we're strong, you're strong, maybe we should stop decimating each other's people. <laughs> um, we'll make peace, we'll make an agreement, you guys hang out in the groves and the centaur will hang out in the plains. But now, the dragons have been gone for 10,000 years. And the centaur have come so far since then. Mm -hmm. And they've been here, and they've been existing and developing their culture. How much they are they all gonna come add over as one clan much. led by the mighty Maruk and Tira, and they founded a new life here. So if you want to get across, you have to follow their rules and their traditions. You have to earn their trust. You are the first yeah, actually, outsiders to come in to generations you. upon generations. The centaur might rule the open plains, but the green dragons make their home really in the groves. And those groves are absolutely gorgeous. And how great a job it is that we have where I can take all of this beautiful artwork and build these beautiful fantasy groves, high fantasy. We want to do lots of things with an open plain, and we want to be creative with that. But we're restraining ourselves by letting the zone sing, letting the horizon tell the story. We certainly couldn't have done that in the vanilla WoW. No, definitely <laughs> yeah. not. The zones are so big and you can see so far, especially in Onaran Plains. Mm -hmm. So we talked to the engineers mm -hmm. and we actually increased that distance. It spurs you on to want to adventure and look through the zone and explore everything. The interesting thing for me is we have all these conflicts with the dragonflights. There's missing dragons, there's battles, there's so much crazy stuff happening, but that's not really all we're doing. There's so much extra fun activities for people to do. And the greatest thing is that you need to figure out exactly what's going on and help solve all the problems that are just sprouting up everywhere. We're just really excited to tell a story that's grounded in Azeroth and exploration. There's so much more to talk about. But now we're going to have some folks talking about the next two zones that players are going to experience in the Dragon Isles. Hello, Hello everyone. Spin. My name is Kate. Well, I'm Christy. I'm problem. Kate. I'm Sean. We're going to talk today about Baldrassus and the Azure Span. Mm -hmm. So Azure Span is going to be the third zone that players adventure through, and it's one of our biggest zones that we've done in the Dragonfly, maybe even to date. We knew it was going to be like the largest visual elevation change, and it really started with this great concept art. When we first were taking a look at the design, we kept coming back to one of our favorite wrath zones, which was Grizzly Hills. Mm. And we really wanted to take that, but wowify it more. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been up to the Bay Area, 
but in the morning that coastal fog comes in and dips down into the redwoods and that sun shines through that's really what we wanted to encapsulate with this forest and not only we have redwoods we've got all different types of trees eventually it'll break open into this wide open tundra that's just golden and red and you'll reach up to another level of elevation where you get to see the snow the majority of the zone is covered in snow and ice we have giant frozen waterfalls ice rivers as far as the eye can see and Sean I know in the forest we can expect our first creatures. We have a small group that lives there called the gnolls. These gnolls are all throughout the forest and Azure Span. They've made this their home. Some gnolls with strange magic that we're going to find out what exactly that's about. Snow gnolls, or as I call them, the snolls, uh, <laughs> up in the winter area. And then some regular gnolls that are just going to be around the forest area. So then we go into the big open tundra where we meet our second group, the Tuscar. It's going to be really neat to explore their culture a lot more. And those kids are adorable. I absolutely love the Tuscar. <laughs> Honestly, all my downtime is probably just me hanging out with the Tuscar. <laughs> So it's been a little while since we've seen them. We remember the Tuscar from Wrath of the Lich King. They're also getting a nice cool up for their models, along with expanding their culture. So there are going to be male Tuscar, female Tuscar, Tuscar kids. So we're going to fight alongside them, which includes help from a certain group of dragons, the Blue Dragons. We're going to follow the story of Caligos, our blue dragon buddy from the Kieran tour, and he's gonna be adventuring into Syndragos' archives. It's a giant zone, there's a lot of surprises. When we're done there, we head over to Aldrazas. Aldrazas. It's really incredible because you will be going through some of the previous zones and seeing a lot of ruins mm -hmm. uh, for the dragon uh, buildings, but when you get to Thaldrazas, everything is perfectly intact, it's beautiful, it's pristine. It is the seat of power for all five dragon flights and home of the dragons. It feels that way with the huge vertical mountains. We've got these great cave systems where you may end up finding little dragon mm -hmm. hordes. My favorite dragonflight right now is the bronze. They've got a really cool area in Thaldrazis and their magic is time. There's so many cool story hooks that we could dig into there. There's so many cool gameplay options. And we have a little bit of an adventure for players. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait. We really wanted it to feel like their old stomping grounds. One of the really cool features is going to be the main city and player hub for this expansion, Valdraken. It is a culmination of all of the dragon's efforts to put together what muted. the city My would bad. look like. So we ended up having a bunch of really fun right. small vignettes where you can see that the blue dragon flight is hosting a public library. I know, I actually didn't know And the muted. red and green dragon flights both have their own separate gardens. We'll also have um, some convenient me. services mm -hmm. for players, including an auction house in the city, yes. which will be really nice if you're looking for more exotic wares. The thing that really sold me on Daldrazis was the initial concept art we got of Tearhold. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. And this is a 10,000-year-old Titan technological marvel. Tearhold has these awesome aqueducts that actually come out from the structure all the way to the city across the valley. And in the cinematic, there's just this amazing shot where you see Alexstrasza swoop under one of them, and there's splashes of water cresting across her wings. So when players are flying around themselves, they get to have their Alex Straza moment. What an incredible place and filled with so much history. Tearhold was built by Tear. He was a Titan Keeper back in the day who helped the Aspects fight Galakrond. And when they settled on the Dragon Isles, he built this facility. And even though Tear's gone, the dragons have held him in reverence. But that was 10,000 years ago, and they've let the Titans maintain the place. An incredible amount of history has happened since then. Flights have been nearly wiped out. There have been invasions, betrayals. Aspects have died. And these are the kind of things that leave marks on a society. So now they're all back here and they're all here together. As we were designing the zone mm -hmm. and the, the city itself, we're trying to figure out, you know, how do we tell those stories at the same time as making sure that this is a really convenient place for players to go mm -hmm. and, you know, go shopping as you know, they tend yeah. to do. So much adventuring happening on the Dragon Isles. It's so it's... cool. <laughs> as a player, you probably don't have your own dragon wings. You are going to learn the art of dragon riding. It's so vertical, and I'm just excited to like dive off the tops of towers and swoop under things. It's actually one of the things that we're about to learn about next. Let's hear that.
Hi, I'm Jake. I'm Andy. I'm Kali. And I'm Greg. I think I look and like I'm really Rich. excited to talk to you guys today about the Dragon Flight. Not as much from the side, new from the front, and class like coming in Dragon Flight. We're here to talk about not only the Evoker, but also Dragon Riding, which is our exciting expression into the exploration of the Dragon Isles. We knew with a dragon themed expansion, we wanted to let you play a dragon. Not a big dragon, Alex Straza size. That'd be tough to fit into raids. I'm sorry, Jake. Okay. I know, I know. <laughs> it's fine. But a draconic human. So the great. Drac Fear, created by Neltharion. And like our other hero classes, <laughs> you get to choose if you want to start on the Horde or Alliance side on character creation. So let's talk a little bit about the Evoker, the class they can be. What's unique about it is because the, the Drac Fear are created by an aspect, they have the ability to wield the magic of all five dragon flights. So Evokers can take advantage of red magic and blue magic and bronze magic. And to show that, we created a visual, what we call a prismatic effect. This prismatic effect is basically the coalescence of all their energy as they channel it into whatever spell that they're going to cast. You have a red magic spell called Pyre. So when you shoot it out of your mouth, it twirls in the air with all five of the Dragonflight's magic as it turns into the red spell before landing on your enemies and exploding and hopefully burning them. And I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that vibe across that they use all five was really important to us, but we did want to make sure that each specialization focused I'm telling on you, two. Chat, it's a raid five boss. different colors gets a bit messy. So their damage dealer specialization, their first of two, Devastation, mostly focuses on red and blue magic. Red being very fast and explosive, burning everything with pyre, whereas blue is more focused and overwhelming. You can shoot a beam of energy out of your mouth to disintegrate one single enemy in front of you. There's a healer spec called Preservation. The healer spec is gonna focus mostly on your green and your bronze magic. So your green is gonna be evocative of the Emerald Dream, your growth and your nurturing spells. And then you have your bronze magic, which is gonna be more timey wimey So you get to heal a wound faster. So in addition, to the visuals and the animation, which all make you feel very powerful. We really wanted the player Fat to have a physical months, connection dude. to the cast. I'm telling you, dude, we this thing's gonna be a rate. It's gonna be so overpowered when it comes out. When you I'm actually hold you. down the button on your keyboard, it charges up the spell. The longer you charge it up, it might do more damage or hit more targets, depending on the spell. But it gives you this really physical connection and control that's new for World of Warcraft, and I think is feeling really, really good. We have some great we animations. Thank you, Andy. Your team. You love it, Andy. You feel physical when you're casting your spells. You can actually fly around the battlefield and cast while you're flying. Oh, that's oh, that's great. From that's above. totally great. balanced. In addition That's, to the you know gameplay, what? though, another part of feeling draconic is looking like a dragon. Well, we talk about dragons breathing fire, but you know what's actually fire? What's actually These fire? These customizations. Oh, my goodness. Hey. <laughs> but no, they're really, really they're cool. They're awesome. Because you have both your draconic form and your humanoid form, and the customization options for both of them are amazing. They're very good. What but, about color? Just tell yeah, me tell you us about the, the color. You can do a lot of matching, so your visage form mm -hmm. can have scales that are the same color as your draconic form. But my favorite, super favorite part mm -hmm. of customization for the visage form, mm -hmm. hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like I can actually do this in game. In ga yeah. The tech is here. I, I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As players make their way through each of the areas of the Dragon Isles, they'll partner up with the Dragon Flights to move through the air as they've never done before. You'll notice I did not say flying, because <laughs> flight has a very specific meaning for World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And, and we're talking about something new. So the dragons can only be one class. Like there's their own, and like, the class and the race. the players are honing their dragon riding skills, they're going to get to see all new animations that go along with the different look and feel of the drakes. We're aiming to shake up movement with this new system, providing players with a deeper immersion with forces like momentum and gravity. We knew that for Dragonflight, we were going to have the opportunity to show players a whole new set of Dragon Isle Drakes, completely unique from all the other things they've seen in World of Warcraft. And so we wanted to come up with a movement system that would add that sense of physics, weight, and gravity, like you were mentioning. We knew it was going to take a huge team effort, not just animation, but it was going to take effects. It was going to take the engineering team, who we rely on heavily. And that, combined with some new animations, really helps to lend that feeling of physics as you move through the air in ways that you haven't before. And the icing on the cake is going to be some really cool effects that we've added on top of all of that. So for example, when you start hitting you know, maximum velocity, you're going to see contrails coming off the edges of the wings. And then as you do your rolls and spirals, you build up more and more speed. There's going to be some screen effects on the display to indicate that you're reaching maximum velocity, which really adds to the overall kind of immersion and sense of reality. As players make their way through the Dragon Isles, they'll discover new cosmetic options to fine-tune their Dragon Isle Drake's appearances. Things like snoots, 
horns, and tails, mm -hmm. elusive Dragon Isle Drake armor, and more. Can I have spikes? Definitely. Okay. We want to provide players with all new skills to play with, as dragons those on who stream. can use yeah, their momentum well nice. can reach higher and higher heights and bring on new, more difficult challenges. We just have so many new, gorgeous options mm -hmm. to choose from, and I'm just so excited for all of them. I'm excited for the whole thing. I mean, it's been a lot of fun to work on, but I, I can't wait to actually get in the game, play it with you guys. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to fly around Dragon Isles. It's yeah. going to be great. Next up, you're going to hear there. about the talent revamp and the UI changes coming in Dragonflight. Maybe no games. Dude, maybe no Warcraft, dude, he's on tour. Hello, my name is Brian. I'm Crash. I'm Jay. And I'm Laura. We are very excited to share, so we are finally revamping the WoW HUD UI. And it is also time for a major <laughs> revamp to talents and specializations. I have a big question for the group. How long do you think it took for us to finally revamp the WoW HUD? My guess is like 15 years. Close, 18 years. 18 reactions 18 are cringe. Years. They're not wow. actors. You know, they're, they're technology has changed a lot since we made the UI back in 2004. Now you have like bigger monitors and us, we have better dev tools to work with. So it makes sense to have the revamp right now. Also, if you look at the game today, <laughs> game they designers. are evolved well, beautifully <laughs> over the years. And if you look at the HUD, the HUD looks like it got frozen time. So when we approached this, oh, no. we wanted to create a no, layout no, 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 that no, no, players no. could customize, <laughs> move things around, adjust it to fit their needs. Add-ons today, they do a lot for player customization. The downside is, is that not everybody uses them. It's about time that everybody has the opportunity to use them, that they become a part of the base UI. Yeah, and we are working very closely with our user research team to make sure we are hitting the goals that our player needs. It allowed us to add new functionality to improve accessibility in a lot of areas. And on top of that, we are gonna be improving the art. Yeah, so the art update, it's a big part of this project. The UI that we have today has a lot of charm and personality and players have been using that for 18 years. So. With that in mind, we want to respect the players who really like the current UI, but do a more than take to it. Removing the clutter and giving more visibility for your gameplay. So the new minimap, it looks bigger, and the health bar is also yeah, much bigger. Expansion, if you look at the action bars and the common. bottom menus, they have less head frames, and you can really open up your There's gameplay, so you don't have a lot of your UI in front of you. And of course, we want to find iconic pieces from the current HUD, but we want to bring it back in a nice way. So we for sure updated the Griffins. They look so nice now. And the Horde, don't worry, the we got you. We're going to have your version as well. So let's talk about the edit mode. We are putting a mode in that will let players move various HUD elements around on the screen. So I'm able to move the mini-map, say, from the right corner all the way over to the left corner, or if I want to, to bring be honest, my action this bars is, from this the is bottom something and that put them more in the center should already my character, the those are all things that I'll be able to do. Absolutely. And each of those different components will have various sets of options that you'll be able to work with. They'll be able to save it, edit it, work, yeah. copy Final it, Fantasy 14 name had it. it. Also, It'll remember which spec you're in. Actually, a bunch of So games if you're someone who jumps around People a lot, would download add as you switch, it will switch to whatever HUD layout you have for that spec. This is an ongoing project. We're going to keep working on it. So we really want to hear back from you. A project that we're all excited about that we've been collaborating a lot on is something that's pretty UI intensive, and that's the talent system. It hadn't changed in a long time, like you said before. And we really started with how can we have players have more choice over what their character has? As you level up, we give you a new spell or a new ability, something that kind of makes you stronger, but it's, it's determined by the designers. We decide the order. Yeah, we started looking for a system that would give players a much wider set of options. And after looking at all those things, what we really returned back to was the idea of trees. But it's actually two trees. We have a, a class tree that offer different class utility, and then we have a spec tree that is focused on performing your role, whether that's damage tank or healing. Can I just jump in and say that I personally am super excited about having trees come back. There's a big nostalgia hit for me. As we said, we have these two trees because we feel like picking a specialization is a really important part of your World of Warcraft character now. And so we want to make sure that when you choose that, it kind of affects the tree in some way. Yeah, as soon as you open your talent tree, you'll see something new. The class side will have some abilities filled out for free, just kind of starting you off. 
in that spec you've chosen, but then hey, you'll have your first point to spend in the class tree, which could be something related to spec. that spec or role, or it could be something from elsewhere in the class. There's a lot of uh, things that we can do here, and part of that is encouraging players to perhaps make combinations <laughs> that they've never really been able to see in the game Lawyers before. Camelot. This is an opportunity to put a lot more art and fantasy in the actual talent UI itself. You have seen that a lot through most recent expansions, but not the base UI. We want you to be able to tinker. I'm with glad they're bringing back. We want you to be able trees. to make a lot of changes at a lot of times and not necessarily have to commit. The power really is coming back to the player. Uh, they, it's not they, something they saw we how much people, people like to this feel classic. locked into. And so one of the things that we'll be preserving is the ability to change these talents uh, at the same kind of antics. frequency that you do now. Yeah, the old school players, when you see trees this time, just think, yeah, I'll, I'll go from my raid night to my arena match and figure out what I think is the best for both of those. And that's a process we want to make really fluid. So we're building a save load feature that lets you create your build, name it, save it, and then load it up very quickly and freely. Talents were really about the breadth of options. We've made all these different cool things over the years, but when are they at their coolest? It's when players can hold the building blocks of what can make up their class, their spec, and put them together in a way that works for them. So these are really cool features that we've been working long and hard on, and we're very excited about them. And it's just an early preview of the things we've been doing. We can't wait to see the reaction that you have to them, and please reach out to us and let us know your thoughts on them. And next up, we're gonna talk about professions and Dragonflight. Okay. Hi, I'm Joanna. And I'm Eric, and we're gonna talk about our plans for professions in Dragonflight. Professions have been a staple of World of Warcraft forever, and they've seen lots of really cool incremental updates over their life. But for Dragonflight, we wanna do something a bit different. We really wanna rethink professions and figure out how to make them part of your identity as a player, if that's what you want. We really wanna make sure that professions feel fun and relevant across all levels of gameplay. That brings us to our first update, something that we're calling Crafting Orders. If you want to have something crafted for you, but you don't have the skill or the right profession to do it for yourself, Harold, thank you, for the you can have it crafted months, through a crafting order. You can basically browse any of the recipes that can be crafted, pick the one you want for yourself, and then you include so some uh, or all no, of the regions people, needed for the recipe, most people are including cool. ones that only you can get your That's hands on. Just... You can find someone in person to do it right in front of you for you. Honestly, or it's just like... you can also go to bro, an NPC there's no using an auction house-like interface, like, whatever, send the order out. If you're doing this, you can pick, do you want to send the order to anyone, sort of a public order, or do you want to only send it to your guild, or to a specific other player, maybe. It's a friend who you know will be able to craft the item really well for you. If you are really dedicated to your craft, you're going to be the best at what you do. One of the coolest things about this is the item you had crafted can also be soul That's bound. not what I said, Dipchip. In the past, I said the other way you could around. only get your hands on crafted soul bound items there, by having no that profession yourself. Now anyone can have them crafted for them, which is really neat and really expands the number of items that we can provide that are really powerful because everyone can have them crafted through the crafting honor system. This is also really cool because it means as a crafter, you can start building your client base. People are gonna come back to you to get certain items. Maybe you're the best at making it or you always throw in a little something extra. Actually, I like, clicked you're on some other streams and it was like everybody was sub only. It's gonna be really only great. Only so the first time you go to craft, you're so gonna notice a lot of test. different things. Like, but I'm probably under... the biggest is the introduction of quality, both to it your crafted items and your gathered like, reagents. Like, quality only only works in a pretty simple way. If you craft something that's a higher quality, it's just gonna be better. For a piece of gear, that probably means a higher item level. If it's, for instance, a potion, you know, that might mean a more powerful effect at a higher quality. And we're doing a lot of new things in the UI. We've put a lot of work into it to make sure that the professions feel really special and unique. And another thing you might notice in the crafting UI that's new is the introduction of stats, specifically to your professions, both crafting and gathering. And this is another sort of major input into quality. Probably the biggest source of your ability to craft items at a higher quality is through crafting specializations. We've had crafting specializations in the past, as far back as original World of Warcraft. With Dragonflight, you can go out and earn specialization points in a whole bunch of different ways. So maybe you find an old book on a bookshelf in a ruin somewhere, or a hermit in a cave who can teach you a little bit about your profession. So let's say you're a blacksmith, uh, you might decide that first you want to become an armor smith. And the more points you spend in armor smithing, the better you're going to get at crafting all armor. This also means that if you specialize one way, other people in your guild may specialize in a completely different path. So this means that your guild could have several top blacksmiths and everybody is providing something unique and valuable to the team, which is really cool. Now that reminds me of another update. 
we're actually adding crafting tables to all the different crafting professions. We're gonna take those, and we're gonna put them all in the main city of Valdraken, and you know, you're gonna go in there, and you're gonna get to see all the different players crafting their items at their cool crafting tables. Yeah, it means you're gonna walk into the city and you're gonna see like all these alchemists huddled over here and you're gonna see all these blacksmiths over by the forge. There will be other players filling orders or grabbing orders. It's gonna be a whole new crafting area that's gonna make you feel really part of the world. It just seems I think, like a I think the new crafting stuff is, is really, really smart. Past. What I'm most crafting excited about WoW for years is has, we're introducing has not new felt types really of gear good. for every profession. Even, and and, and even going you back go to, Vanilla. to say mine a node, you're actually gonna just switch into that. Crafting gear. is like kind of cool. really great. You're not gonna have to carry but, that stuff around in your backpack no. <laughs> anymore. It's actually gonna be dedicated slots for each each of your pieces of gear. But I'm a numbers guy, I love progressing. All pieces of profession gear will have those special stats that we mentioned before on them. And as you get your hands on better versions of the gear, you know, it's really gonna help you get better at your profession. I can't wait. Thank you for tuning in to the Dragonflight Deep Dive. You've heard a lot about the content and changes coming in Dragonflight, and game? we've got no, a I lot suck. more in store for you in the coming months. Until then, we'll see you in Azeroth. I'll be honest, I think Dragonflight looks intriguing. I think there's some things about Dragonflight um, that... I, like, the, I think Evoker, I think the dragons are just going to be OP. That's... It happens in almost every game. New class, new character, new this, new that comes out, and they're just overpowered as hell. Look at Death Knights. Look at, um, I mean, look at any League of Legends champion, right? It's gonna be overpowered. It's literally like, hey, like, oh, what if it did like an Anixia Deep Breath? Oh, what if it could fly and cast at the same time? It's like, bro, how am I even supposed to attack this guy, right? Uh, mobility out the ass. It's gonna be like Demon Hunter's word. Um, it's gonna be kind of AIDS. But uh, I think systems-wise, they are saying a lot of good things. I'm not a huge crafting guy, but I, like, I, I think the idea of having good crafting is cool. Uh, even though I'm not a huge into it personally, like, I, I respect it, and I think other people really enjoy that, and, and, and I want them to have like, a good crafting system. So then making the updates they are to crafting and adding like a, uh, basically like a bulletin board for commissions and stuff, this is for retail, uh, that is cool. I like that a lot. Um, when it comes to Wrath Classic, when it comes to Wrath Classic, uh, I'm, well, I guess I'll keep going with retail a little bit. Blizzard is always going to do well when it comes to uh, when it comes to the art and the design. Um, some things can go a little bit too far sometimes. I think what they're going for with Dragon Isles is, like I said, like it's it's very like elemental, lush. Um, it's it's going to be something that is very very uh, naturey, for lack of a better word. And even from what we saw, I think they're going to do that, right? Obviously, they want flying to be a big thing. They added like the new flying mechanics and stuff. Uh, you have your own dragon, which is basically like a chocobo. And I think games will always do this, right? Where for years and years, every MMO that was coming out was trying to be a WoW clone. You don't beat WoW, you don't beat WoW by trying to be WoW. And I think now it's funny because Blizzard is trying to do the same thing by taking s smart things from the other MMOs. Like, um, like the dragon thing is totally like you have a chocobo in Final Fantasy IV. So there's a link for opting into the Wrath beta. Uh, I will probably be playing Wrath beta whenever this drops. Um, damn, dude, I might be doing shows all fall. I don't know what's going to happen, man. I, I really don't. But uh, if you guys want to get on that Wrath beta, you can go in. I think the new talent trees. Did I talk about the talent trees yet? I think the new talent trees, uh, they're very intriguing. And this is something that I, I said this before WoW Classic came out. I said my hope with WoW Classic is that it's amazing, right? But beyond that, beyond that, my hope for WoW Classic was that it was going to be used as a tool to make retail WoW better and that they were going to be able to draw inspiration from the things that people really enjoyed in Classic and see if they could find a way to implement that into retail WoW while keeping retail WoW what it is, right? Because there's people that just like the way retail is and there's people that just like the way Classic is. And that's fine. They are two separate games, but you can draw inspiration from it just as if it's any other MMO. Uh, I think something with the talent trees historically and in, in, uh, really since Cataclysm, it's been horrible. It's been, it, it has not been fun. E ever since Cataclysm, uh, whenever they started redoing all the talents and everything and redoing how the classes work, um, 
And actually, I think it goes beyond that. I think they went through two big changes. Uh, you, you lose a lot of the flavor and you lose a lot of the customization and it locks you into being this and it locks you into being that. And it, it's not good. It, the, 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 like you, you don't feel like you're in control of your character and what your character is. And the reason they got rid of that in the past was because they were like, oh, nobody cares about 5% parity. Nobody cares about this. Nobody cares about that. But the issue was not that nobody cared about it. Nobody realized how much they cared about it until they lost it. Nobody, like, they thought that, like, a lot of those talents were bloat, but in reality, now that you go back and play it, it's like, oh, that's cool because I'm a better gamer now and I understand it. People just didn't understand at the time, the average player. A lot of times, and this is why, this is why I say, people say Blizzard doesn't listen to the players. The problem isn't that Blizzard doesn't listen to the players. Sometimes Blizzard listens to the players too much. And the average player, unfortunately, doesn't really understand the entire scope of why things work. And whenever Blizzard goes and listens to the wrong people, then what happens is they put out a product that people don't like and they don't know why they like it. Blizzard listens to the players very much, and they have for a lot of years, and it, it shoots themselves in the foot. Now, I do think there's a difference between not listening to the players, listening to the players, and then, boom, right in the middle, respecting the player's opinion, listening to what they don't like, and then it's your job as a developer to go and find out why do they not like this and let's go attack that problem. Let's find a solution and attack that problem. That is how developers need to approach games in general, especially games like this where it's online, there's constant updates and all this stuff. That is, that is just how it's supposed to work. And um, the problem is a lot of times, like devs don't do that uh, and they go for trying to uh, gain favor with the player base, but it's all about the bottom line, and the bottom line is, is the game good? That is the bottom line. Is the game good? Even things like microtransactions. People don't get mad about microtransactions if the game is good. And like, we've seen that, we've seen proof of that. Or if people like the game. It's not on developers, it's on project management to pass through the changes. They're all developers. Like, it's all, it's all the same, like, they're, they're, they're a collective, they're a group. Right. That is that is what needs to happen. And I don't know, but I have a little bit of hope in this. Even seeing something, I'm extrapolating all this just from the new talent trees, right? I, I see some semblance of that with the new talent trees. Right? So let's talk about Wrath. Uh, I'll be honest, I was surprised. to Because to, that's something that not, not only me, but a lot of people were like, oh, like they should not have Group Finder in Wrath. Uh, group Finder was one of the things, and, and a lot of people look at Wrath as the beginning of the end. Uh, actually, I think more people probably look at Cataclysm because it's the more like, it, it's, it's a very distinct difference in the game from Wrath to Cataclysm. But I also think there's a lot of people who see that kind of stuff was sprinkled in, the changes were sprinkled in, in Wrath. Right, things like the group finder, which led to the raid finder, which uh, it's just little stuff like that. It's it's just starts getting sprinkled in in Wrath. And if you look at the scope of Wrath as a single expansion, it's very good. A lot of people consider it the best time in World of Warcraft. A lot of people consider it to be the best time in World of Warcraft. But um, ironically enough, it's whenever I quit. Right, I quit at the beginning of Wrath, and I came back at the end. And I couldn't get back into the game literally because I, I didn't know anybody. Uh, everybody, like not everybody, but most people that I played with had quit. So, and then they changed Paladins a ton. So like my class was different. Paladins got changed, or er, uh, I didn't really have anybody to play with. I was gonna have to find a new guild and everything. And I just, it was my senior year of high school. I was training, doing football, all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just done. And then I came back afterwards. I came back at the end of Wrath and then I couldn't get invited to anything because it was all Link the Chiefs, bro. Link the Chiefs, yo, what's, what's, your, what's your gear score, dog? And it's like, dude, I don't have any of this, but I can't get invited to anything. I was the top rate. I was the rep paladin on Kel'Thuzad in Burning Crusade. Like it was like that. Like I would literally come home from school and people would be talking about me in trade chat on Kel'Thuzad. They'd be memeing on me, right? Because it's like oh, S fan rep, whatever. But like, yeah. So so, frick! I was more popular in high school than I'm now. I, I think if you think classic is nostalgia. There's gonna be some nostalgic elements to it for a new player coming back to it, but if you think that's the only reason people wanna play something, uh, I, I think you're a, you're just a moron, right? So here's what I was saying. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited for Wrath Classic. Uh, the more and more I think about it, I, I did miss out on a lot of things, and it's going to be a first experience for me in a lot of ways. I got to level 75 
and then I quit, and then I came back. I remember hardly anything about, like, the leveling process, or, like, I, I remember, like, a few zones. Um, but then I hit level 80, and then I did, like, uh, I, I did some Trial of the Crusader, I think is what it was. But I didn't get to do anything. I didn't get to do ICC, I didn't get to do Old War. Uh, I didn't even do Nax. Because at the time, nobody was running an axe anymore, whenever I came back. Paladins are great and rad, they're going to have blast. No, I mean, I I, I know Paladins are, are, are overpowered as hell, but um, it's not, I don't think it's as fun. Like, whenever they changed Paladins and Wrath, the, the actual gameplay of how you play a, a Paladin and Burning Crusade is, is more fun to me. Dungeon design and Wrath is unmatched. Wrath had more flavor than any expansion in terms of dungeon variety. You know what I've actually heard from a lot of people who, who played more Wrath than me? is the game is going to be pathetically easy because you guys remember the concept of being a wrath baby right when cataclysm came out and the difficulty went up and people complained to all hell and they nerfed everything wrath of the lich king was whenever the game peaked in popularity world of warcraft in 2007 was the same as fortnite in 2018 dude athene was on fox news every news outlet was uh, was talking about World of Warcraft and, oh, look at this this evil game that's ruining kids' lives. All this stuff, right? So the game, whenever the game peaked and leveled off was halfway through Wrath. Um, like, it was just getting insane amounts of popularity. But Wrath of the Lich King, content-wise, was very... It was just easy for a lot of people. Now, the PvP was great. Even in Burning Crusade, I think that way about Burning Crusade now. I think that it is very important to, to adjust and to uh, tune the game properly to where there is the right amount of difficulty in being able to do the raids. I, I don't think it's good for Classic to be a total cakewalk. I know for a fact that's the way that Blizzard, uh, there are people at Blizzard who think about the game that way and they think that it should be that way. But it's not good. Are you going to play Wrath of Dragonflight? Uh, I mean, I'm going to... I, I will showcase Dragonflight. I'll, I'll stream it whenever it comes out. I'll play with it. Uh, and, and just kind of give an honest opinion on it. But uh, I, I don't really expect to ever really, like, dig into Retail WoW like I did in the past. I don't know. I could. It could end up being really good and I, and I fall in love with it. But uh, when it comes to Wrath, Wrath is going to be kind of like my main thing. I, I expect to kind of be done with wow after wrath that could change obviously if, if the game is good i enjoy it and it's, it's good for my stream then, then yeah maybe but but i i i i don't really expect to to keep playing wow after wrath of lich king um like I'll, I'll i'll play whenever a new expansion comes out to like i said to like showcase it or whatever um be like oh like this is what i think this 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 what yada 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 but uh in general i just don't see um uh, I don't really like uh see one way or the other whether or not I'm just like gonna keep playing